If you are not happy, if you don't feel loved, if you don't feel that your partner or you are reciprocating and seeing you, hearing you and sensing your pain and empathizing with how you feel, then get help. The narcissistic person will present themselves as maybe a victim rather than the abuser. Let me ask you, Mariella, if you find yourself in a position where you are a narcissist's supply. In fact, most people who end up with someone narcissistic was probably raised by someone narcissistic. It's very, very probable. However, I think people can listen to the fact that they are not happy. I think, I think people know when they're not happy. Welcome back to the mini series here on the She Word Living with a Narcissist. It's not about you. We are now in the third of a five part series on narcissism. And we've already looked at whether narcissists are born or how they are made. We've also looked at whether narcissists are able to change. And today we're looking at how to identify a narcissist. Now, this is really important because the term narcissist is used very frequently and pretty much around anywhere it can be bantered this term narcissism. So for somebody who's a little bit grumpy, maybe somebody's a little bit moody, you might say that they're being a bit of a narcissist. But narcissism is a very particular personality and or personality disorder. So to explain this to me, I am joined by psychotherapist Mariella Demek. Hello. Hello, dear. Trudy. Always <laughs> lovely to have you on the show. Champagne oh, bottles or no champagne <laughs> bottles, but it's really good to have yeah. you here. And of course, this time we're looking at something that's a very serious topic because narcissistic behavior has an impact on all of the people around them, not just on themselves, which has a long, far reaching Im impact on them, but pretty much anybody that comes in contact with a narcissist, whether it be positively or negatively are going to be impacted by their behavior. Yeah. So in order to be able to, as I said, recognize. recognize it and not just say, oh, you know, my mom's a narcissist because she's a bit grumpy, but to be able to look at what is a narcissist enables a person dealing with that personality disorder or trait to rationalize and to understand and to be able to respond and protect themselves in a very particular way. Because there are common denominators between yes. those people that, who are affected by narcissism. Yeah. We've looked at where it comes from. We've looked at whether you can change a narcissist. But now, Mary, define for me, what are the personality traits? What are the characteristics that you would find in a narcissist? Well, first of all, it's very important that one understands that the severity of narcissism is not the same across the board. The type of narcissism mm. is not always the same either. So um, we're going to talk about symptoms. We're going to talk about signs. We're going to talk about what to look out for. If we have the time, I also want to point out who narcissists, narcissists will look out for too. Mm. Who are they attracted to? Who are the people who will attract somebody who's a narcissist? Well, one of the first things that definitely exists in somebody who is narcissist is um, a serious lack of empathy. Now, empathy. There are people who can be very charming that can be uh, misdiagnosed as, oh, this person is so kind, so warm, so empathic, so, but in actual fact, it comes across more as being very, very charming and uh, attractive and sometimes seductive. So somebody who's narcissistic will uh, charm the pants off you easily. You know what I mean? But, but, um, uh, it won't really be real empathy. It won't be real caring. And a person who is a narcissist will show concern and care because they are going to gain from showing you concern and care. So there's an ultimate... There is an ulterior motive. Outcome, yes. yes, okay. So it's one thing helping someone and caring for someone and supporting someone um, and really identifying with their pain. Um, but it's another thing uh, 
if you're going to do something for someone and you're doing it because you want to seem as the superhero or the person who's going out of their way. So this is very difficult sometimes, especially for people who are living with someone who's narcissist, because someone who's narcissist will then use that to make you feel guilty. They will then throw it at you. I do this for you, I do this for you, I do this for you, and I do this for you. You know what I mean? Mm. How can you tell me no? Because one of the hardest things for a narcissist to hear is the word no. I will not do as you say. I do not agree with you. I do not think highly of you in this situation. You are not doing the right thing and you are not as great as you think you are. That is the worst approach you can have with a narcissist because that hits them at the worst place pro possible. A narcissist will act uh, very easily. This is the most easy aspect to notice. This grand, this um, sense of grand, this grandeur, this sense mm. of grandeur, this sense of I'm better than everybody else, the sense of I'm above everybody else. Sometimes egocentric, even, real egocentric. But even sometimes to the extent that they do not believe that they need to follow the rules that other people follow. So you will have people who will cheat, who will lie, who will manipulate, and they will justify their actions. They, um, it's very interesting. I was discussing with a colleague, uh, a therapist of mine this morning, and we were, you know, uh, um, supervising some work that's being done. And uh, they do a lot of um, speech. They cover what they're doing with very, very clever words and speech. And somehow when they're talking to you, you will not really sense that they're actually feeling with you. People need to listen to their guts more. People need to listen to what they're sensing. And they need to trust themselves, okay? Because um, many aspects of a narcissist will always leave you wondering, questioning, am I wrong? Am I making a mountain out of a mole molehill? Look how bad this person is feeling. Mm -hmm. Look how, and they have a great way of manipulating the truth uh, justifying their their uh, way of of getting their way, they find it very hard not to get their way. They find it very hard not to look good. So everything that they do, this is their ulterior motive: lack of empathy, this area of grandiosity, this putting other people down. Mm. So there's a very very great way of criticizing everything and everyone. Um, there's a very um, fine, fine tuning in the way they somehow will put people down. It is not necessarily very blatant. It can be done in a very uh, delicate way, a very manipulative way, in such a way that the narcissistic person will present themselves as maybe a victim rather than the abuser, mm -hmm. the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, I get a bit um, concerned because the truth is it's very rare that a narcissist will ask for help. A narcissist will not come to a therapeutic session and say, I am coming here because I am hurting the people around me. I am coming here because I feel that I am doing something wrong. They will come with a list of what their partner is doing mm -hmm, wrong. Mm -hmm. They will come with information about why their partner is not good enough. They will come about information about why they made mistakes because their partner made them make mistakes. Mm. It can happen even in places of work where, for example, they will never admit to doing things the wrong way mm -hmm. and they will tend to blame others. So it's very much a very massive defensive attitudes mm -hmm. too. A lot of the times, narcissist people, when they are being questioned, confronted, uh, told no, their reaction will be contempt. They may get aggressive, angry, hurtful, and they will put you down. However, after doing that, they can become very pleasant. Mm -hmm. If they manage to get their way, and if they manage to recognize that you are going to accept what is being told to you, then they will change their attitude very, and become charming, nice, 
uh, easygoing once again. So, I mean, wow, <laughs> that is a lot of information there. So I'm wondering if the, if it's possible to kind of put that into into more of a kind of concise list, just so that we can, if somebody's watching the show, is is that something that is possible to just say, look out for these particular? Yes, I mean, I, I, I to be honest with you, there's so much to talk about when we talk about. Yeah, Muslims. absolutely. I literally wrote down a list. Brilliant, you know. Brilliant. Um, well, first of all, like I said, they lack empathy. Yeah, and that's really something to look out for. And let me tell you how you look out for it. When somebody is being genuinely empathic with you, you will sense it. I could be saying words, the person next to me can be saying words, but it's very important to recognize that you will sense that the person is being genuine. And if somebody is coming out with words that are correctly empathic, but you're not feeling it, then something is wrong. So we really need to believe and what we, we sense. An overblown sense of self, Mm. okay? So if you're going to present yourself as, you can have somebody who has a PhD, you can have somebody who's a professor, and they would say, yeah, I have a PhD or I have a... That is based on reality, on something that you have worked for. When you're talking about an overblown sense of self, it's very, more often than not, based on clay, not real actual facts, not real actual... You're triggering you know, a, a memory in my mind. A of, lot of, of things would be different. Of a narcissist <laughs> who came up with a, a story of where they had come from and the, the qualifications that they had managed to get at school and how they'd done this and how they'd done that. When I actually sat down and questioned them and said, how can you have done that and done that and done that all before the age of 20? That doesn't make any sense. You know, that's the narcissist that then... You're questioning me? Where did you go to school? What did you do? Yes. And totally flipped on the other side. But this whole idea, idea of grandiose, of I am qualified, I'm yeah. this, I'm that and the other, to a, to a, an extent where physically, logically, it made no sense. Yes. And that is what they, they will do. Uh, that's what a narcissist will do. A narcissist will attack. Mm. Okay. Yeah. If you manage to figure out and find them out and expose them, the worst thing you can do is shame them or expose them. Then that narcissist will attack Mm -hmm. or will make you feel very guilty Mm. or will criticize you to such an extent that you lose even the the way you're thinking Mm. and you're not really sure that what you're thinking is true. You begin to question yourself. So we have empathy, we have grandiose. The relationships that narcissists have are very superficial because if you're lacking empathy and you're lacking uh, that real genuine contact um, and you're real being genuine and real, then your relationships are going to be based on superficiality. The way you look, the way you present yourself, the way you're seen. Uh, I mean, we're living in a world full of materialism. We're living in a world full of so much pressure on the way we are seen on the outside. We're really not helping ourselves here. Mm. We're really um, raising our children to give too much importance on the outer shell rather than the inner. So we need to be very aware of that. Relationships tend to be superficial. They look good, you know, but they're not necessarily feeling so Mm. good. They take advantage for, of others. So they're very good at recognizing weaknesses, very good at rec- recognizing weaknesses, very good at, at realizing that people, for example, their partners or people at work are very empathic. Empaths are really sitting ducks. Sitting ducks, they are empaths with narcissists because they uh, are very willing to help out. They're very willing to oblige. It's something they like to do and need to do. So narcissists will take advantage of others, for example, in this way. And they will do it for their own personal gain. So whatever they do, the ultimate goal is how are they going to feel better? How are they going to look better? What are they going to get out of it? Another thing is there's a there's a lot of hyper uh, focus on their fantasies of their grandeur. They're always imagining this image that they have, and they're always 
believing that this is the way they should be seen and this is it's very important that they're seen this way this is very important to recognize in the way they speak these are things that you don't really they're not going to come out blatantly and say them but most of the time when they talk about who they are or who they want to become and who they see themselves as and how they present themselves this would be a very a very strong trait that would be in our system can i ask you there just marilyn just give me an example of what that sentence might look like ah it would look like okay let me give you an example um a couple in therapy um uh, the wife has a very good position at work she's been working really well she has a real excellent position and the man the partner doesn't have the same position um uh, doesn't have the same sense of responsibility and is not seen as a successful person as much as the woman is for example um the man will present himself when they introduce themselves in the way that he presents himself he will present himself as the most experienced the one with the better job the one with the best qualifications the one who is really efficient and good and capable there will be a lot of pumping up about his achievements to the detriment of presenting the the partner and this is done very finely and most of the time the partner is so used to it the partner has normalized it the partner will see this as totally normal and it's very difficult so at, at, for example as a therapist i will be seeing this and if i point it out immediately forget it that person will never want to return again what if you could start your journey over start here and start again there that's how life works in a circular way we understand the importance of circles and that's why you are at the heart of ours find your way to wellness with browns and i'm assuming as well that if you are looking at a couple and you see that behavior in one of it could be him or her uh, you see that behavior i i've had this in my own life you you look at a couple you can see that one of them is acting in a particular way that it is clearly narcissistic towards their partner uh, or, or to their wife or their husband. And so you draw alongside and you want to support them. Now, that's not always the best thing to do because after the door has closed, and we're not talking about in a therapy situation, we're talking about in a in a in an open friendship or, or you know, family member situation. If you audibly draw alongside them and say, hey, listen, but, you know, her job or his job is actually great. You know, he's doing really, really well. And you shame, and a third party shames no, that, no. that narcissist. That narcissist might not come back at me, but the person that he's with yes. or she's with is certainly going to play once the door is closed. Yes. yes. They will be punished. In some way, they will be punished and they will be put down. I mean, one of the worst traits honestly one of the worst traits i find it very painful when i'm sitting in a therapeutic session and i see how people suffer uh, because one of the worst traits that a person suffers with someone who's narcissistic is that they believe the criticism and the put downs of the narcissist they believe it they normalize it and they literally fall into the trap of the patronizing and overbearing attitude of somebody who has such a low sense of self-esteem that the only way that they can feel good is by putting others around them down it is the only way and there's a patronizing uh, manipulative way of behaving demanding very they present themselves as very sensitive and being offended very easily so there are all these traits that one has to look out for when you're talking about narcissism but something that i think is very very i find it's the hardest thing to deal with is when we're talking about covert narcissism mm. that's a bit different because you have the overt narcissist 
who overtly is outgoing and charming and manipulative and somehow is, is acting very confident, etc. But the covert will not do that. A covert narcissist can be very quiet, can present themselves actually as humble, can present themselves actually very different. However, what they will do is they will be passive aggressive. And that is so painful. When you have someone who, for example, will not speak to you and punish you for three days because you have not behaved according to what they expect, that is passive aggressive. And that is a covert narcissist who is being cruel and putting down and not being empathic because you have hurt their ego in some way, hurt their extremely weak ego in some way. So that's something to really look out for. Let me ask you, Mariella, if you find yourself in a position where you are a narcissist's supply, because it's one of the things that I've come across recently that, that narcissists look for their supply. As you said, they're deeply insecure. They need a supply to elevate them, to keep them up there, to, to keep them from, from feeling whatever it is that they, they are ultimately experiencing experiencing and if that's if you find that you've become their supply i'm going to ask you two questions and and we're repeating this and it's absolutely fine that we're repeating this over and over again during the course of these yeah. five shows because i think it's really important to validate the fact that anybody could potentially become a supply for a narcissist yeah. but there are certain personality traits which are very much attracted to that whether it be a covert or an o or an overt narcissist, and unfortunately, I keep mentioning this perfect storm. When you get one, a narcissistic personality with an empathic personality, and somebody who maybe has been damaged, you create that perfect storm, and they become the supply. I think what's very important to note is this: many people have a misconception of who narcissists are attracted to. A narcissist will often be attracted to somebody strong. Uh, uh, popular, um, with a good status, because a narcissist will ride on that. A narcissist will look good next to this person, but this person also has to be empathic and this person has to be confident, genuinely confident. And it's, this is why it's very important. That's very fine because it's very often you come across a person who is genuinely confident, who is genuinely outgoing and genuinely charming you know, um, and comfortable being in the, you know, in, 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 if, if any, anything happens and they're comfortable in speaking out, et cetera, um, who is capable of being assertive and speaking their mind. That doesn't mean that that person is narcissistic. I think this is why I emphasize a lot on empathy and I emphasize a lot on genuine, being genuine. And I emphasize a lot on listen to how you sense your gut feeling. Because you, everybody can, everybody can sense unless they are damaged, honestly. Somebody who is strong, who is confident, who is genuine, who is empathic can sense when somebody else is not being empathic. Most narcissistic people will look for someone they can look good with. The problems arise when that that person begins to feel very unfulfilled and that person begins to feel very unloved and that person begins to believe the put downs of the narcissistic person. When that person begins to believe the put downs of that narcissistic person, that person begins to break down. That person begins to lose their sense of self and that's where the problems then will arise. And also, of course, I mean, <laughs> we could sit and talk about this for hours yeah. because it is such a complex and hopefully yeah. over this series of four, five shows, we at least open the conversation and will enable somebody to identify, somebody who needs to identify with a situation that they're in. And then, of course, they can reach out for help. And that's what, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Because I think being validated that you are in this situation where you are being pulled down 
and put down over and over again leads you to a point where you question yourself. Yes, you begin to believe it. It becomes normalized. Yeah. It becomes normalized that you're called stupid, that you're called uh, incompetent, that you're called silly, that you're called petty, that you're called unattractive. That he, or, for example, a narcissist will boost up another woman, mm. uh, knowing you're suffering, knowing you're suffering. You know, um, somebody narcissist can hurt people and not feel their pain. Um, it and you say, but isn't that a sociopath? Isn't that someone? No, it can be a sociopath. A sociopath will not feel anything in their conscience for sure. But a narcissist, at the end of the day, they feel their pain. They feel, they get upset and they, you know, if they look bad, if they do not gain whatever they're, they're out to gain, if their fantasy of what their sense of self should be is not achieved, and if the people around them are in any way inhibiting or stopping them to achieve, there's this grandeur sense of self, then the people around them will suffer. And they will not, not come to therapy because they believe that they are behaving or being hurtful to others. They will come to therapy because the other person in their relationships or the people at work or the people at home, they cannot understand why they're having problems with them. They cannot understand why they're telling them no. They cannot understand why they're not giving them what they are asking for. They don't understand it. And when the things are pointed out to them, it has to be done in a certain way that they can take it, which is rare, but it's possible. You talked a minute back there, Mariella, about gut reactions yeah. and, and trusting your gut. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to point out that, that there are situations where you may have grown up with a narcissistic parent who because of what they're doing, we've just talked about this, causes you to question, means that you no longer trust your gut or you don't, you override that gut feeling so many times because you're being called yes. into question. That you don't have that yes. gut. Yes. And we can just say that for some people that gut reaction shouldn't be what guides them because it's a malfunctioning gut. And I think in that instance, follow the people around you or follow your therapist, listen to what they're saying and believe in what those whom are closest to you and have your best interests at heart are saying. Sometimes you need help recognizing your you gut. definitely need help. There's a lot of help around. There is help around because there are so many more professionals than when I was young, so many more professionals. I agree with you. In fact, most people who end up with someone narcissistic was probably raised by someone narcissistic. It's very, very probable. However, I think people can listen to the fact that they are not happy. I think, I think people know when they're not happy. I think people know when they're not being loved in the way they would like to be loved. I think people know when their partner or people at work are not treating them the right way. It's good if you go to someone professional to check what is, what is it that I'm feeling. Yeah. Because it could be a million other things. A million other things. I agree. But I know for a fact Everybody knows when they're unhappy and everybody knows when, the, when somehow something is not right. Mm -hmm. So ask, go to someone professional. Don't just Google because this Googling is so dangerous on all fronts, medical, psychological. I mean, Googling is very brief. It's very, it's very, you know, it's just a framework. You do need to check because things overlap. You know, like I've often had worked with couples where one of the persons in the, in the in the in the relationship would say, "Because my partner's narcissistic," and I said, "How do you know?" I'll say, "How do you know that your partner's narcissistic?" I googled it. I googled it. Oh my gosh! You know, no, but it's very real. But I know what they're doing. They're trying to understand why am I unhappy. They're not always wrong. They're wrong sometimes. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes it's not just that. You know, because, for example, another trait of someone narcissist is somebody who's who's a perfectionist and who's controlling. OK, that could be someone who's a narcissist, but it could also be someone who's OCD. It could also be someone who's very anxious. It could be a million other things. So you do need to get professional help sometimes. But one thing is for sure, Trudy, if somebody is unhappy, 
you're unhappy for a reason mm. and you need to find out why. Mm. So if you don't have somebody who's empathizing with your pain, who's not seeing your pain, who's not seeing you for who you are, again, narcissistic traits. Those are the narcissistic traits when they don't reciprocate, for example, in relationships. I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. And at the end of the day, you realize, when am I going to get some consideration, some love, you know? And many times the thing is this, they're gaslit. Narcissists are very good at gaslighting. They will gaslight you. So a narcissist will post comments. For example, I will post comments to you that I know are going to get to you. You will react, start screaming and shouting, losing the plot. And I will go, look, you're crazy. Mm. Look, and I will be very grounded and look, you're crazy. Look, that is gaslighting. And that is really, really painful. And that can only be done if the person doesn't empathize. Mm. Because if I care for someone, how can I remain so cool, calm and collected and gaslight you and hit you where it hurts? So these are all traits that you need to look out for. And it's true, you're right, people can be conditioned to accepting this, but it still feels bad. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. still feels bad. Any last thoughts, Mariela, on identifying a narcissist, the traits of a narcissist? I think overall, all right, what you need to look out for is this. I think I've mentioned most things. Mm. One thing to recognize is this, that a lot of people who live with a narcissist spend a lot of time in denial. They also spend time blaming themselves. They spend time believing. They spend time thinking that they are self-centered. They are thinking of themselves. They are selfish. They question. But somehow, whoever is listening, if you are not happy, if you don't feel loved, if you don't feel that your partner or are reciprocating and seeing you, hearing you and sensing your pain and empathizing with how you feel, then get help. Get help. And at the end of the day, two things can be done. Either you learn how to protect yourself from a narcissist or you walk away. Thank you so much. And in the next episode of this series, we will be looking at how to deal with a narcissist. And after that, we'll be looking at how to protect yourself. Mariella, thank you so much for coming and making this so clear. Tried my best. <laughs> thank you.